You say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I open my heart and I open my ears to receive your word. I thank you that your word speaks to me right where I am with, an, with open ears and an open heart. I receive your word today. Change me. Holy Ghost, change me in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word today. We ask you, Lord, speak to us, minister to us where we are. We just give you all the praise and all the glory right now in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, amen, amen and amen. You can turn to your neighbor and give him a high five and you can be seated. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Well, I, I've had some notes that I've been hanging on to uh, from different people that I've listened to lately, and um, I've been thinking about um, uh, just the, the days we're living in. Hadn't this past year, specifically the last nine months, hasn't it been fun? It really has, and, and, and it's just been fun, amen. I know uh, uh, I have one church member they, they call, they're still testing positive, and, they, and they're just tired of it, you know. Uh, Chris, can I, I, I can say this, Chris tested positive for weeks. And, uh, but she enjoyed every minute being at home. Amen. She loved it. Didn't, didn't ruin her day at all. She was excited and happy. Got to, got to hang out with the dog and just have a good time. And uh, she, she got things done, right? There's a lot of things that happened got done. Um, you know, but I tell you, it's, been, it's just been a fun time. You know, you, you, isn't it just cool that we can live through something that hadn't happened in 100 years and still be happy? Amen. Uh, you know, I think David can say this, David Hunt, and I think Matthew, Pastor Matthew can, but their businesses have been over the top. They can't keep up. God's moving in the midst of all of this. Amen. It's, you know, it's all about how you focus, isn't it? So my title is Pastor's Checklist, How to Grin and Win in the Days We're Living In. That's a good title, isn't it? Now, my checklist, I'm not going to give you a checklist today. I'm going to give that to you next Sunday. All right? But um, uh, today, I just kind of want to set up what I'm talking about. I, I think uh, uh, Miss Jane and, and I were talking on the phone when I was up in uh, Ridgely about stuff, about politics and stuff. And, and I told her what the Holy Ghost had, uh, was, had shared in my heart, and uh, I hadn't shared it with anybody. But uh, um, and Jane, correct me from your seat. Uh, so I get this right. <laughs> um, I was saying us skewed, and it's skewed. Uh, the body of Christ, I really believe, for the last several years has been skewed. And when I say this, listen to what I'm saying. If you look up the definition of skewed, it'll freak you out. It means you lean to the left in a curve. like you're, I mean, the way the Holy Ghost showed me, people were falling off the cliff and just being, they're totally taken in either to the left or they curve over to the right and fall off that way. Instead of when they're supposed to be, where the definition reads, you're supposed to look straight on. See, Jesus told us when we put our hands on the plow, we don't look to the what? Left or the right. You don't do that. You look straight on to Him. Even Paul told us in his, in, in, in his letters, he said, he said, I'm going to fight to the finish. I will keep the faith. In fact, before he died, he, he, he said that to Timothy, didn't he? I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. You know, you've got you <laughs> you to be willing to just grin and win because the Bible says you're a winner. Yeah. I said the Bible says you're a winner. Amen. I said the Bible says you're a winner. Amen. If you keep looking at everything else, you're not going to feel that way, are you? Right. Oh my gosh, you feel like you've been licking a dill pickle jar. And just licking a pine stump, you know? You ever bit into something that's just absolutely so tart, drew your jaws together, and pow! We used to do those warheads. Y'all remember that warhead candy stuff? At camp, we used to take a whole bag of them, have teenagers stick all of them in their mouth, and see how long they could hold that. Yeah, that'll light you up right there. You know, some of you in here even, even watching online, you need to have a little warhead moment. Amen! Get your eyes off yourself. Think about how nasty that is in your mouth. Amen. You know, we got to think right. We got we to think right so we can receive right. 
I said we got to think right so we can receive right. Some of you aren't thinking right and you're receiving from the wrong spirit. And that's not God. You listening to me? So today, I want to set this all up. And I want to talk to you about how to grin and win in the days we're living in. But today I want to talk to you about living, uh, living on the offensive. Living on the offensive. Amen. I'm not talking about being offended. I'm talking about you living on the offensive. You know, in volleyball, you never score points unless, you, unless the offense is going. You only score points when you're on offense. Other sports are different, all right? But I want you to see this first verse that I got for you here. Amen. And uh, we're talking about living on the, uh, on the offense, the offensive. Amen. Living on the offensive. Amen. This scripture I thought was really good to start with. Hebrews 12, verses 28 through 29 says, Do you see what we've got? I love the way it reads. Do you see what we got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming. Brimming with worship. Deeply reverent to God. Isn't that powerful? Read it again. You ought to get every tr translation of the Bible you got at home and underline this, highlight it. You ought to type it out, put it on your refrigerator, your bathroom mirror, and everywhere else. And hear the Holy Ghost speaking to your heart and your head right now. Your head. Do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship. Overflowing with worship. Deeply reverent before God. I'm telling you folks, you ought to be grinning from ear to ear every day because we're winning. Amen. You're a winner. Yep. I'm a believer and not a what? Yeah. Doubter. Amen. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. How about you? Yeah. See, we're, we're, we are winning. Why? How can you say that, Pastor? Because the scripture tells me that I am a winner. The scripture tells me that we win. See, we have an unshakable kingdom. Boy, right there we could stop and shout all day about that. Not only is the kingdom unshakable, but the kingdom of God's in you, baby. Won't you start acting like it's in you? The kingdom of God's in you. The scripture tells us we have an unshakable kingdom. The scripture tells us here you should be thankful. Everybody shout thankful. Look at your neighbor and point right at him. I know it's not polite to point, but I want you to tell him you should be thankful. You got that right. You should be thankful. Have y'all been around people who got attitude or they just get angry at the drop of a dime? Or they get a little snippy? Are you snippy? There's snippy people that act like a yapping dog. You're not focusing on the unshakable kingdom. And you sure are, you're sure not being thankful. See, see, the, Paul tells us here, he says, you have an unshakable kingdom, you should be thankful, you should be over the top with worship, you should be deeply respectful of the Word of God, and you ought to be obeying it. Everything else is on you if you're not doing that. Are you listening to me? Now, Joe will tell you, I like baseball. <laughs> I coached volleyball for a while. I did run track in junior high for a little bit. Matthew did a whole lot more than I did. But I'll be the first to tell you uh, that I am no sports analysis. I am no... <laughs> analyst. I, 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 analyst. Uh, I am no armchair quarterback. I get excited watching football. But I'll be honest with you, and I know if I offend some of you, I'm sorry, but I could care less about sports right now, too. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. I will not be watching TV tonight. I'm going to watch Keith Moore. Because I want to keep my, my hope set high. Because Jesus is Lord. Because I'm grinning and I'm winning. Are you listening to me? I've been to several games. You know, in basketball, though, Thomas played basketball for, for most of his uh, years in, in school. And uh, um, we had fun doing that. We were on the road a lot. And um, 
Uh, you know, uh, the basketball team where he really excelled on, and they won gold balls uh, for nationals. They were number one in the nation. Uh, but when you were playing the games for the season, you didn't feel that way. Because every game they played in a different league, they got their behinds handed to them on a platter. I mean, they were beat big time. I don't tell you what uh, league it was, but uh, uh, I mean, they played a lot of players who were just, you know, there's a lot of street ball going on. That's the best way to say it. But they lost almost every time, every time. But you know what? As parents, when that's going on, it makes everybody edgy, it makes everybody snippy. We had a couple of mamas, they were real snippy. We had, uh, we had a couple of umpires threw one mama out. <laughs> Ouch! It wasn't Melissa. <laughs> but you know, um, but in, in basketball, when there's a team that gets overly cautious, instead of playing the win, they simply begin playing not to lose. Do you understand what I'm saying? They just begin to play not to lose. And usually, usually this happens late in the game and they're trying to hold on to their lead. And oftentimes, uh, you know, they had a big surge of momentum, but all of a sudden, there's an increased effort from the opposing team. Y'all ever watched a game like that? We have a lot, and it's just something. I know, was it the University of Missouri we were at? Uh, uh, I don't see Thomas in here, but uh, we were up in Springfield, uh, and they're playing on a, a college floor, and they won the gold ball. One, the one time they came in second. But they beat all these teams. I and mean, it just blew my mind. And I realized, you know, the, the coaches were conditioning them. They put them with one of the roughest leagues to make them into real men. <laughs> and uh, when it came time to turn it on, I mean, oh my gosh, they turned it on. And they won. You know, this last year, this last year has left a lot of people reeling. And I think a lot of people have had this attitude, circle the wagons! <laughs> you're like, you know, you're, in the, you're in, the, in the desert area and you're circling the wagons because the engines is coming. <laughs> and you're all panicky. People packing their garages full of toilet paper and uh, buying food and canned goods and dry goods, putting up everything they can. You know, circling the wagon mentality. But all this happened back in 1918, too. Even in World War II, everybody believed Hitler was the Antichrist. But yet the end didn't come. In 1918, they believed it was the end of the world. But the end didn't come. We have a lot of people that way right now. And the thing is, you're playing on the wrong team. See, we, we need to be grinning... And we need to be winning because the Bible says you are a winner. And the Bible says you ought to be grinning because you have the joy of the Lord in your life. Somebody shout amen. Amen, amen or oh me. You know, that the circle of the wagons type of mentality is dangerous. And I know there's legitimate reasons to uh, have defensive strategies, you know. Uh, I, we, we have extra water in the house because we lived through Hurricane Elvis. Anybody else live through Hurricane Elvis? Y'all remember that? Uh, you know, that was fun. A thunderstorm, multiple thunderstorms collapsed over Memphis. It was something else. Uh, but, and it was rough. A lot of trees down, a lot of power lines down. It went on for almost a week for some people, some people two weeks. No electricity. And I know there's defensive strategies. strategies I, mean, I can't say it. Thank you. Uh, you know, I understand that. But listen to what I'm telling you today. Instead of playing to win, what we've seen in the last year is people begin playing not to lose. But you need to understand something. I'm, again, I know there's defensive strategies that we adopt and utilize in life. But you need to understand we're not just here to just run out the clock. I said, we're not just here to run out the clock. 
and hope that Jesus returns before it gets too bad. I hope he returns right now. Oh, Jesus, come on home. Take me. You might as well drive into a phone pole if you're going to live that way. Because you're nuts. You have the greater one in you, but yet you act like you've never met him. Oh. See, you better get your shout on and you better turn your faith on. Because the Bible says the just shall live by what? You hearing me? See, you know, people living to run out the clock and just hope Jesus comes back before it gets too bad. Well, if you're living that way, I really believe you're in error. See, you and I as Christians, how many of you are born again in here? Hold your hand up this morning. All right, I'm talking to the right crowd, not the choir, not, not the back row sitters. I'm talking to, the, to everybody who's saved, born again, loves Jesus, right? Yes. Filled with the Holy Ghost, something many of you are. Yes. Yes. Praying in other tongues, that's a good thing too. It turns on power inside of you. The more you do it, the more powerful you're going to be, be living. Amen. But, you know, uh, we have a job to do. And you're going to give an account for it one day. You're going to stand in front of Jesus. He's going to ask you, what did you do with my word? You know, Matthew 12, 36, he, he told all the disciples, everyone's going to give an account of their words. <laughs> what you talking about? You know, you're going to give an account one day. Well, I'm saved. Yeah, you are, but your mouth is going to have some things to talk about before the Lord. I told you that story about our stepdad. He got mad at my mom. He went outside and a big old angel appeared to him with a, a, a stenograph note page taker. It's a big angel, big angel. He said, go ahead, Joe, say it one more time. I'm writing it down right now. Talk about her one more time because I'm writing down your words. Well, he repented real quick. See, some of you are entertaining angels unaware right now. And it's time to grow up and be the man and woman of God you've been called to be. It's time to realize you need to be grinning because you're winning. Amen. Amen. Right. Cha, 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 cha. <laughs> Amen. See, um, you got, remember, Jesus is going to ask you, what would you do with my word? What would you do with it? The just is going to live by faith, baby. How you living? Huh? See, when Jesus said the gates of hell would not prevail against the church, he meant it. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You, all you that raised your hands just a moment ago, you are the church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Amen. Amen. You got more to shout about than you know. At least, I, I think a lot of you know it, you just don't believe it. If you believe the Word, you'd act different. I said if you believe the Word of God, you'd act different. Amen. See, the gates of hell. Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. Matthew 16, 18. You know, to me, when I read that, I think Jesus' presumption is that his church would always be on the offensive. I believe, Jesus believed, that his church will always be on the offensive. Which, I'll give you my central theme today. It's going to look weird to you, but I'm telling you, this is it. Our mentality in life should not be hold the, to hold the fort, but our mentality, our mentality, our supernatural, spiritual mentality our mental mentality should be to storm the gates. Spiritually speaking. So you ought to walk with a skip in your step and a big smile on your face. Amen. You ought to be excited about the Lord. You ought to be excited about faith. Every chance you get, you should be speaking His Word. You should be living different, walking different. I always loved the, the old rock and roll song and and uh, one of the singers, he'd sing it uh, uh, about, the, about this guy standing there with a big old southern grin. 
And I got to thinking about that this week, and I thought, you know, faith lives with a big old southern grin. Yeah, baby, I got it going on. If you don't know Jesus, you don't know squat. See, I'm a winner. Because of the blood, I'm the healed and the whole. Because of the blood, I am totally provided for. Are you listening to me? Is that you? Because of, I can grin it because I'm winning. You all remember Roy Clark and Buck Owens? I'm a picking and I'm a grinning. Y'all need to start living different. So Pastor, I, 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 you ain't drinking from the same well I am then, are you? See, if you want to live different, you need to drink from the well and of the waters of the Holy Ghost. You need to get your proverbial act together. Because Jesus may tarry. You may pass on, die, go to heaven that way. That's why you need to shake off those heavy bands and grin and win. Because you're grinning and winning in the days right now that we're living in. Just as they did in 1918. Just as they did in World War II when all the churches were preaching that Hitler is the Antichrist. <laughs> but Jesus didn't come. See, you need to be living your life by faith. The just lives by faith. Amen. You don't live your life in fear. You do not live your life in fear. Jesus' presumption was that His church would always be on the score, would always be on the offensive. Amen. Big old southern grin. In faith, I always win. Hallelujah. I win in my finances. I win in my health. I win in my provision. I win in every area of life, and so do you. Amen. Can I hear a big amen? Amen. You're a winner. Shout it out. Say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Amen. You believe it today. Amen. Amen. Come on now. I'm a winner. Glory to God. You know, there's various interpretations as to what Jesus meant when he talked about the gates of Hades, the gates of hell. You know, one of the images I read in a commentary, I think it was Wearsby, um, uh, it was a, uh, the image of, of a big castle with gates. And, and when you think about that, you know, you, you think, well, that's, gates were designed for the defensive. And, and yeah, it is. That's true. Um, uh, I look at it as uh, the blood covers me when I think of the castle gates. All right? Uh, it's, it's a place of refuge and safety. Are you with me? Amen. And, uh, but uh, one, of the, one of the commentary writers, William Barclay, uh, uh, he... Uh, if you understand, you know, the gates have an image of, of defensive, but, you know, it really, to me, when I, when I heard that commentary, I thought, well, you know, that really puts the, the church on the, on the defensive. We need to live different. We need to run. Amen. We run towards the prize. We run towards the goal. We have a job to do. Jesus told us we're supposed to seek and save the lost. You're going to give an account for whether you did that or not. In the days we're living in, you ought to be dragging everybody you can to church. Amen. I said, in the days we're living in, you ought to be grinning and winning and dragging everybody you can to church. Amen. Barclay wrote, William Barclay, he wrote these words about the gates of Hades, the gates of hell not prevailing. He said uh, uh, this here. Did I put that on the screen? I did. Here you go. He said, however we take it, this phrase triumphantly expresses the indestructibility of Christ and His church. I love that. I am indestructible. <laughs> oh, you can kill me if you want to, but I live forever. Are you living? Woo Shh. <sighs> yeah, I'm an alien. You cut me, my blood doesn't bleed green. But see, I'm in this world, but I'm not of it. I had a blood transfusion when I got saved. How about you? I became a new man, a new creation in Christ. See, you ought to be living different. You should not be walking around, oh, poor pitiful me. That's on you. Watching that 
Babylon box and all that garbage that flows out of it called the TV or the radio, reading all the funny papers, the clickety-clickety-click of the Google. Now, I know it's a, it's a tool, I get that, but don't let it, <laughs> don't submit yourself to that tool and make it Lord of your life. See, you ought to be grinning all the time because the greater one's alive and well on the inside of you. You are triumphant and you are indestructible. Are you hearing me today? That's why I can grin, I can win in any time frame that I'm living in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, I was trying to think of a good way to express this and in, in, in something you can really grab a hold of. And the story that I thought was perfect was the story of a young man named Gideon. Do y'all remember the story of Gideon, the youngest in his father's house? Just a kid. Youngest in his house. And uh, uh, Gideon's, the story of Gideon reveals one of God's children trans, trans, uh, transitioning from a defensive life to living on the offensive He's, 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 he's growing up from living defensively, and he's grown up and matured. Listen to me. He's grown up, he has, he has grown up and matured uh, uh, to where he's living on the offensive. So how do you mean by that? Well, listen to me. All of Israel at that time frame was, were cowering, cowering because of the bullying and the intimidation of the Midianites. They were, they were cowering down. They were in fear. They were, oh, we're all going to, they're going to hurt us all. They were being bullied. They were being intimidated by the Midianites. And the Israelites had been impoverished because of their oppression. They were taxed to death. There was all sorts of stuff going on. But in Judges 6.6, 6, I want you to see this today. Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. Now as the story unfolds, Gideon, Gideon uh, 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 is cowering himself. You know, if you read the story, Gideon was cowering inside a huge vat, a huge multiple uh, pieces of wood with metal bands around it in a huge wine vat, uh, or, or I guess a, a wine press. And he is in there at the bottom of a wine press, and he is threshing wheat so he can eat for his family. He, he's, uh, he's at the bottom of a wine press, hidden, hidden. Everybody say hidden. hidden. You know why? He's in fear. I'll tell you something else. He was insecure. And I'll tell you something else. You ready for this? Curl your toes. I love you. He was in pride. He was afraid. <laughs> He's at the bottom of the wine press, hiding out, trying to just fix things so he and his family, his four and no more, can eat. Listen to me. This, you know, he, he should have been on the threshing floor, shouldn't he? If you understand what they did back then, he should have been out in the open on the threshing floor, but he wasn't. He was hiding, insecure, fearful, panicky, at the bottom of a wine press. And this whole story to me, you know what? It just illustrates the level of intimidation that Gideon himself was experiencing, the insecurity. I mean, you can get, listen to me, you can get minimal results threshing wheat in the bottom of a wine press. So you need to understand Gideon's fear kept him from significant productivity. Gideon's fear kept him from significant productivity. What are you allowing to keep you from significant productivity? Oh yeah, that's good preaching right there. What are you allowing in your life to keep you from significant productivity for the kingdom of God? Because that's who we live for. That's who we serve. 
Come on. What are you allowing in your life that's keeping you from significant productivity? You know, before Gideon could even get on the offensive, he had to overcome his own self-defeating excuses. How about you? You know, think about his mentality as he conversed with the angel for a minute. You ready for this? This is the story here when the angel appeared to Gideon. Judges chapter 6, verses 13 and 15. This is from the New Living Translation. I want you to see this. Notice how it reads. Gideon's talking to the angel. He says, Sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Boy, it sounds real familiar, doesn't it? Sounds about the, like the days we're in. Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now, Lord, now the Lord has abandoned us and has handed us over to the Midianites. But Lord, Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh. And I am the least in my entire family. Can you hear the? He's talking to the angel of the Lord. <laughs> Would you talk to the angel that way? <laughs> I don't think so. But Gideon was. You know, we need to consider the strongholds of fear in our life. The strongholds of unbelief. We need to consider our inferiority complexes that grip us and keep us paralyzed and keep us from being significantly productive for his kingdom. See, Gideon's stronghold of fear, unbelief, and inferiority gripped him so bad it paralyzed him. Folks, you and I cannot afford to have that kind of thinking in our lives. You and I cannot afford to have that kind of thinking in our lives. You know, the good news is here, the good news is, is that Gideon eventually yielded himself to God's directives. Remember, I've said this a lot through the years, but, you know, in your yielding, there's power or there's defeat. There's, you, you win or lose in your yielding. What are you yielding to? Amen. But see, when Gideon eventually yielded to God's directives, it got him listed in the great hall of faith in Hebrews 11. Did you know that? It sure did. In fact, look at this verse here in Hebrews 11, verses 32 through 34 from the New Living Translation. It says, How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of faith, of, of, of the faith of Gideon. And then he lists other people there. David, Samuel, so forth, all the prophets. But notice the last part here. It says, By faith these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions. They quenched the flames of fire and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Glory to God. I love that. Amen. See, that's why you need to just, just put your hands in your pocket. Just put one foot forward. Just say, I'm grinning because I'm a winner. Amen. I know that's not good English, but I like the way that sounds. <laughs> you listening to me? I, I'm, I'm grinning on the inside and on the outside too because I'm a winner. I am victorious because of the blood. I walk in freedom no matter what. Amen. The church has been triumphant for a long, long time. Longer than you've been alive. Longer than you've been alive. Longer than you've been alive. Can I say it again? Longer than you've been alive, the church has been triumphant. It's time for you to get on the ball team and play triumphantly. And quit acting like you're not. Because you're triumphant, because the church is triumphant, because the blood was shed so that you could walk in victory. Somebody shout amen. amen. So you got to remember this, folks. Faith, folks. Faith, my brother and sister, uh, faith will put us on the offensive. Amen. Faith will put us on the offensive. I don't care. Are you ready for this? I love you, but I don't care how you feel right now. According to the scriptures, we're not moved by what we, uh, we, we are to be moved by what we believe, not by how we feel. You need to get over yourself. 
and start walking by faith. The just lives by faith. I said the just lives by what? Faith. Faith. It's time for you to get a hold of yourself. I'm not being insensitive to you. I love you. I know if you're going through something, call us. We pray for you or come see me. I'll sit down and counsel with you. Yes. But you understand what I'm saying right now? You need to shake off the cloud. Get yourself back into the glory. Get your shout back on. Come on now. Get your shout back on. Start looking at, hey, look at what all I got. Woo! I, I'm, I'm walking in an unshakable kingdom that's alive on the inside of me. Hallelujah. About Carol Burnett, get that Tarzan yell going. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, you got it, girl. You understand? You got it, young man. You got it. You got the goods. It's time for you to grin because you're winning. Amen. Amen. You got to be thankful. Do you see how thankful you must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship, overflowing with worship, just gets all over you and everybody else. Deeply reverent before God. That's how you ought to be living. I mean, it doesn't matter how you feel. We're not moved by how we feel. We're moved by what we believe. I believe God. I believe His Word. I believe the blood was more than enough. Amen. Amen. The blood was more than enough for me and you. See, you need to know and believe that faith stays on the offensive. You know the mission of God? Are you ready for this? Curl your toes, I love you. The mission of God has not been put on hold because of a virus, because of an election, or even because of the government. The mission of God has not ever been put on hold in any generation. It remains the same because the church is triumphant and full of power and full of glory. And it's time that His body acts that way. Are you hearing me today? Amen. You're not down in Ghana drinking Kool-Aid right now. Do you understand? You're a winner. You're not a loser. You're not defeated. Amen. I mean, we can make whatever logistical adjustments we feel are necessary. I get that. But you know what? You're living in and you're living by faith. The just shall live by what? Shout it out. The just shall live by what? See, we cannot abdicate the great commission or the great commandment. You can't just quit. You can't just sit around and act like, I just need a whole pack of Alka-Seltzer so I can live and not die. (laughs) Jesus didn't quit. He went to the cross and had the nails driven in His hands and feet. What have you done for him lately? Do you understand where I'm coming from? See, folks, we need to be grinning because we are winning. Amen. Our calling and our assignment has not changed. Never has it changed. From the moment you got born again, your calling, your assignment has not changed. You're called to the ministry of reconciliation. You're called to bring the lost to church. You're called to have a smile on your face because you're an ambassador, an ambassador of His power and an ambassador of His love. Don't you think you ought to act like it? I said, don't you think you ought to act like it? Can I hear a big amen? Amen. See, you may have felt increased pressure this past year. A lot of people have. I know they have. We've all talked about it on the phone or texted back and forth. Uh, We've got together and had coffee together, some of us have, and went out to eat. You know, it's been fun, I know. It's been fun. But But I think there's someone who's feeling more pressure than pastors and churches and believers. I think there's someone that's feeling a whole lot more pressure than you've ever dreamed of. Anyone want to know who that is? That's the devil. He is under some intense pressure right now. You know why? Because he's looking at his big clock in hell. And he's knowing, oh, he's knowing, it's getting close. It's getting close. I need to act. I need to do the worst that I can. Because my days are numbered. Do you understand? That's why you need to live on the offensive. If you're on the defensive, you'll lock yourself away. (laughs) You'll lock yourself up, cover up with everything you got. Whine and moan and bellyache when you're supposed to be on the offensive. 
because you're the indestructible body of Christ. You're the indestructible church. Even when they were throwing Christians to the lions, the church never ceased. Did they? Did they? Did John quit when they dipped him in boiling oil? Did he? Hey, he lived and continued till he was released from that prison. <laughs> Pastored a church until he died. What a joy. Listen, the only one under pressure right now is not you, but the devil. Now, I know this may not be exactly in the right terms of the quote-unquote eschatological timeline. All right, that, that's a big word for end-time study, okay? Uh, but uh, um, but please listen to me. Perhaps the reason for the increase in agitation in the world is because Satan knows, according to Revelations 12:12, 12, 12, that that he has a short amount of time left. And you know, folks, it's time for us to be on the offensive and turn up the heat. You ought to be praying in the Holy Ghost more. You ought to be worshiping God more. You ought to be reading your Bible and getting into the Word more than you ever had in your life. It's time to turn up the heat. Amen. And not only that, you know what? Not only should you turn up the heat, but let me give you a quote kind of shock you a little bit. You ready for this? And uh, do I have this on the screen? No. Uh, I'll come to that point in a minute. Amen. Getting ahead of myself. Amen. Uh, the devil knows he has a short time, but you know what? Uh, Martin Luther had this quote. He was noted for saying this. And you can't find it anywhere that he actually said it. Just other people who heard him preach talked about he would say these things. And I want you to hear this quote. He made this statement. He said, if I believed the world were to end tomorrow, I would still plant a tree today. Let me say that one more time, because y'all need to wake up. Martin Luther, the dude that went and nailed whatever he nailed to the Wittenberg door. <laughs> the Wittenberg, Wittenberg door, one or the other. He said, if I believe the world were to end tomorrow, I would still plant a tree today. Now, I don't know whether you actually said it or not, but what a statement. Folks, my prayer for you and for me, for, the, for our church, for the body of Christ, is that we will be steadfastly committed to proclaiming this glorious gospel that changed our lives. That's all we are to do. Everything else... You know, if it upsets you, turn it off. You have a job to do. Amen. Don't let the devil get to you. You ought to be getting to him more. <laughs> you need to drive him nuts. You need to get so busy with the kingdom of God, he breaks out in warts. He breaks out in pimples all over his body because he just can't, <laughs> can't handle you. That's how you need to be living. Amen. Martin Luther said, I, I, even if the world was going to end tomorrow, I'd still go out and do good things. Basically is what he's saying. I'd still go and, and do good, righteous things. Amen. See, we need to be proclaiming this gospel to the earth. And as, we, as well as demonstrating the power of kindness, the power of love, the power of mercy in the earth. You know, the stronger we are in faith, the less afraid we are. Let me say that again. That's what's on the screen. The stronger we are in faith, the less afraid we are. Why? Because I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Amen. See, the stronger we are in faith, the less afraid we are. There's another person I heard this quote. Arthur Wallace made this statement. I think it's real challenging and I hope it'll challenge you today. But he made this statement. He said, um, I'll put it on the screen so you can write it down because I don't think it's in your handout. But uh, he made this statement. He says, if you would do the best with your life, find out what God is doing in your generation and throw yourself wholly into it. That's a good quote. If you would do the best with your life, find out what God is doing in your generation and throw yourself wholly into it. Isn't that powerful? See, folks, church, body of the Lord's church, 
All y'all watching around the world right now, Nigeria and everywhere else, we still have a job to do. You're going to give an account for how you handled that. And that's your reason for living. And you need to see it. Everything else is just you and your pride. We need to be living for God like a wild person. <laughs> do you understand? I want you to get this. We need to live always grinning because we're always winning. How can I say that? Well, may we be found throwing ourselves wholly into the plan and purposes of God throughout this day, today, and in the hour in which we're living in until either we stand before the Lord because we passed away or Jesus returns. Let us be found throwing ourselves wholly and completely into the plans and purposes of God. Because folks, let's face it. Let's stand up. Let's grin because we win. Amen. Let's, let's, let me say it like this. Let's grow up and be grinning because we're always winning. Amen. Do you understand? How can you say that today? Because that's what the back of the book tells me. And I'm, I've read the book. I'm not waiting for a movie. This is what it says. I win. It's what Harry Wilson always talks about when Bryant was sick with uh, cancer, brain cancer. Every time you talk to him, tears in his eyes, when it was the worst of the worst, he would look at you and say, we win. Even with his lips trembling, I saw him do that once. Big tears coming out of his eyes. We win. He would not talk about anything else. He did not watch anything. All he kept before him was the word, scriptures on healing. See, folks, if we're going to really get down and really live the way we're supposed to live, we live by faith. We stand strong. We are ambassadors of the Most High God who has given everything including his life, so that you could have everything. That's why you can stand boldly and say, I'm winning, and I'm so happy. Amen? The back of the book says we win. Would you say that with me today? Say, I win. I win. Would you put your Bibles down in your seat there? Stand up on your feet. Say it with me again. Say, I win. I win. I'm a believer and not a doubter. My faith puts me on the offensive. My calling and my assignment is more important than ever before. I am strong. I am mighty. I am full of joy, full of power, because I walk in faith, not fear. And because of the blood, I am free and winning. Every day of my life. If you believe that, shout hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands up and shout to the Lord. Give Him praise. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We magnify you today. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for your presence today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. Hallelujah. If you're watching from home, watching somewhere in the country, I know i got friends from junior high and friends from high school that's been watching services. Any one of you, anybody, even all of us here in the sanctuary this morning, you know, if there's been anything in your life that just kind of overwhelmed you or been heavy, it's time to blow that out of the water and get back on the game. Get back on your game. God's called you to greater things. Amen. You need to get your game face on. Amen. We're not playing just to win. I mean, we're not just playing just to maintain. We're playing to win, aren't we? Because we are the winners, aren't we? You need to shake off all that trunk of junk you haul around like it's your only friend. And you need to let the joy of the Lord bubble up on the inside of you. Amen. Let the power of God flow in your life as never before. You're an ambassador of the Most High God. You're a king's kid. Hallelujah. You're a king's kid. Act like it. Act like it. You're not defeated. You're not undone. Nothing's changed. 
You still put the devil on the run when you open your mouth. You're an ambassador of the Most High God. You're running towards that prize, and you will not quit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you're in here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you're watching and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's so easy to do. All you need to do is come to the Lord in prayer and just say, Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe your blood was shed for me. I believe you were raised from the dead for me. And you ask him, you say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my life. Make me brand new. From this moment forward, I will live all my days for you. If you pray that prayer, you know what? You're saved. You're born again. You're on your way to heaven. And you're going to live the greatest adventure of your life from this day forward. Everybody shout amen. 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 We need to stop. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost and you'd like to be, come up front. If you're watching, you'd like to be, call us. We'd be glad to pray with you and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Did you learn something today? Amen. Amen. Next Sunday, I'm going to give you a checklist on how to live in these days. And you're going to have a good time with it. And just keep reminding yourself all this week till we get back together on Sunday. Uh, you're grinning and winning. No matter how, ba how bad things look, no matter what the TV people say, turn them off. They're worthless anyway. Get on God's God's playbook, your Bible. Put it before your eyes, and all the colors in your world will be perfect. All right? Amen. Say it again. Say, I'm grinning. I'm grinning. Because I'm winning. I'm winning. Amen. All right. Hey, go shake hands with one another. We love you. It's so good to see you. We'll see you Wednesday. If not, we'll see you Sunday. You're dismissed.